Hi, this is Terry Couty, founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. Welcome to the educational channel where we talk about all topics related to breast reconstruction after mastectomy. I'm very pleased today to have a guest back from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And today we're speaking to oncoplastic and reconstructive breast and general surgeon, Dr. LaShawn Pierce, and he practices in Edmonton, Alberta. It's really good to have you back to the program. Hi, Terry. Thank you very much for having me back. It's great to talk to you again. It's great to talk to you too. Um, I reached out to you because we do not have an educational video or educational conversation on lap flap. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm always so pleased, I guess, but also amazed at the number of options that women have for reconstruction. So, you know, often we sum it up into three, which is implant, autologous reconstruction, or a combination. So yeah. really today, we're going to talk about the last two. And what is so interesting is the variety of autologous reconstruction, which is using your own tissue. So I'm going to let you tell us all about the lap flap today, what it stands for too. You'll probably right. pronounce it way better than I do. So <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining us today. So thank you again for the opportunity to, to talk on your channel. Um, so the latissimus dorsi muscle uh, is one of about four or five different muscles in the back that do pretty much the same thing. So it really has been a workhorse for breast reconstruction and for that matter, other types of soft tissue reconstruction for a long, long time. The proximity of the muscle to the chest wall means that it can be used as a pedicle flap. So unlike the deep flap, which is a free flap, you can actually leave the muscle attached to its artery, its vein, and sometimes its nerve, and just swing it from its um, normal um, habitat on its back into the breast pocket on the front. Now it's quite a versatile flap, um, the latissimus dorsi flap, because you can use it both in oncoplastic breast conservation surgery as well as total breast reconstruction. So starting first with oncoplastic breast conservation surgery, um, this comes um, down to patient wishes and, and um, a shared decision-making approach. So when we talk to patients in the clinic, if they've got a slightly larger tumor, and this could be either an invasive breast cancer or DCIS, so a precancerous change in their breast, and it's relatively large compared to the size of their breast, then historically the go-to would be that they need to have a mastectomy. And most surgeons would therefore recommend to the patient, look, we really can't conserve your breast. We should perform a mastectomy with or without a reconstruction. And we'll talk about that in a second. However, for some people, the idea of having a total mastectomy really doesn't fit with their wishes. And so as breast surgeons these days, we have to take those wishes into account. So over the course of my training and my practice, if a patient with a B or a C cup breast were to come to me with a moderate to large size tumor measuring, let's say four or five centimeters, we, and they did not want to have a mastectomy, I would say to them, well, okay, well, if we did a big lumpectomy, you're going to be left with quite a large deformity in your breast. You're going to be left with a very asymmetrical result and your treated breast is not going to look anything like your other breast. Your nipple may migrate, you may get some puckering, and then that's very difficult to, predict, to correct in the long term. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they're not a, a candidate for breast reduction, so the conventional type of oncoplastics because they've got a relatively small breast. So in this scenario, we use what's called volume replacement. Now, volume replacement can take numerous different forms. More recently, it's taken the form of something called a chest wall perforator flap, where we can move fat, not muscle, but fat uh, into the defect. But if you need a larger volume replacement, then that's where latissimus dorsi can come in. Now, as far as scar placement is concerned, when I was trained, we were taught to leave a patient with a lateral breast fold scar. So what that means is no scars over the front of the chest, but just a scar down the side. And through that incision, we can do both the breast surgery and raise the latissimus flap 
through that same incision. So no scars on the back, no scars on the front, just one scar on the side of the chest. And so that heals generally very well. And the advantage therefore is that there's no visible scars when patients are um, in their underwear or in a swimsuit. If you need a bit more volume and you need to take um, more tissue from the back, then you can actually leave the conventional scar, which is a normally horizontal or near horizontal scar over the back and therefore use the skin and the, the tissues underneath the skin to give more volume to the flap. In which case you not only have a scar on the side of the breast, but you may have a scar on the back. So partial breast reconstruction certainly is an option. Um, when I look at patients, I tend to assess their back and just look and see if they've got some fat overlying the latissimus muscle. I don't tend to use the flap very much if they're very skinny because the muscle itself doesn't give you much volume. So you need to have a good layer of fat overlying the muscle in order to give you some volume to your reconstruction. Because don't forget, if we're using it for partial breast reconstruction, then we don't use implants. This is just a glorified lumpectomy, for want of a better term. Um, but utilizing the flap to fill that hole afterwards. And don't forget, because this is breast conservation surgery, they will still need radiation treatment because we're conserving breast tissue. And whenever we're conserving breast tissue, from a cancer point of view, we need to try and reduce that risk of a local reoccurrence. And we do that with radiotherapy. So patients need to go into this knowing that they still may get their chemotherapy and radiation treatment as they would have done had they had just a conventional lumpectomy. Now moving on, as we know, latissimus dorsa can be used for total breast reconstruction. So these are for patients that have had a mastectomy and it can be used in either the immediate setting, so at the time of the mastectomy, or in the delayed setting. So if they've had a mastectomy, they've completed other treatments, and now they're coming back for a delayed reconstruction. Um, most of the time, I've got to say in the majority of my practice, certainly, the latissimus muscle in most women just isn't big enough and isn't bulky enough to reconstruct an entire breast mount. Even with a breast reduction, let's say on the other side, you still won't get enough tissue like you might do from a deep flap to reconstruct an entire breast. So in most women, we supplement the latissimus dorsi with an implant, which is usually a tissue expander to begin with, and then that gets switched out later on, if that's the way you, if that's the kind of implants that you're used to. Um, so most of the time when we're doing, using a latissimus dorsi muscle to reconstruct an entire breast, we will use an implant. Now, some women will have a reasonable volume on their back, so they may have a moderate sized breast, but they may in fact have quite a large volume of tissue overlying their latissimus muscle. So for some women, we can in fact do a fully autologous latissimus torso reconstruction. And that, that's great for the patients because that means they don't have the stress and the strain and the worry of having an implant, if that's their mindset. Um, and just pushing that further, sometimes patients don't want a prosthetic, they don't like the idea of an implant, and they may have just about enough tissue, maybe not enough on their back to reconstruct an entire breast. So for those patients, we can say to them, okay, well, let's use your latissimus muscle to reconstruct your breasts. Let's accept, sorry, let's accept that you might be slightly smaller on your reconstructed side, and then we can use fat grafting to augment the flap so that we don't use any implants, we're not using any prosthetics, we're just uh, using their own fat to augment their breasts to get them symmetrical again. So you can see it's quite a verse. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I have a quick question about, because I thought of this when you were talking about this. When you do the latissimus dorsi flap and you use an implant, the implant is placed over the latissimus tissue, correct? So it's actually placed in the intermuscular space. So if you remember when you're having, doing a mastectomy, we'll go down onto the pec major muscle. And so when we're doing a latissimus dorsi reconstruction, the latissimus muscle comes to lie directly on top of the pec muscle. So if there is an implant involved, it's in that muscular space, intermuscular space. So it's almost a sandwich. The implant goes between pec major and latissimus dorsi. So, so, so yeah, and so what I'm thinking is you've got that latissimus dorsi tissue on top, making it a little bit softer and more natural feeling. Exactly. And so when I'm counseling patients on their choices in my clinic, and I'm talking about implant-only reconstruction, I'm talking about deep flat reconstructions, I'm talking about latissimus dorsi reconstructions with an implant, I'll say, okay, so implant reconstruction, it's great reconstruction, here's the advantages, here's the disadvantages. 
unfortunately it's just an implant so it may not move like your natural breast and i go to the other side and I say you could have a deep reconstruction and that is probably the most natural reconstruction you can get it will, it will feel soft there won't be any implants involved and then we have the latissimus dorso reconstruction which is kind of in the middle because it's almost like this hybrid approach you will have an implant but you have this healthy biological layer of tissue over the implant so you won't feel it it will move a bit more so i do find that my patients generally fall into two categories either they want an implant only or they want a deep reconstruction but there are a slightly smaller group of patients that don't really want to go all the way with the deep reconstruction with all the implications of the length of the surgery and the length of stay at the same time they don't just want an implant reconstruction and so for these patients the latissimus dorsi reconstruction is actually quite an attractive uh, hybrid because they almost get the best of both worlds it's not as involved let's say as a deep reconstruction but at the same time it's not just an implant reconstruction so so uh, if you look at the data certainly through the 80s and 90s you you would probably see that latissimus dorsi reconstruction was one of the commonest and most frequent types of reconstruction that took place as a dermal matrices uh, hit the market and we started using ADMs a lot more, you had this growth in industry, which was implant reconstruction. Obviously, there have been a couple of scares with implants over the years, which have also bucked the trend. Deep reconstruction certainly has been growing in popularity and you probably would find that auto, uh, uh, free flat reconstructions are one of the commonest types of reconstructions used now. And what you'll find is that latissimus dorsi reconstruction has dwindled somewhat so all of us will still see some patients who are great candidates and, and are really keen to have latissimus dorsi reconstructions but it does take a kind of third place as far as popularity is concerned to deep reconstructions and implant reconstructions what about activity level after because you know with deep flap um a lot of women talk about uh bending twisting, lifting yeah. activities because of the abdominal scar. But yeah. with latissimus dorsi, tell us about activity level recovery after the surgery. So I tend to say to my patients that we're pretty aggressive with their physiotherapy. So I'll try and get my patients' shoulders moving pretty much from day one. Uh, I say to them, the more you move now, the better your mobility will be like in six months. So I really bully them. I kind of joke that I'll get a sharp stick out and leave it by their bed and I'll poke them with the stick every time they feel like they want to do their physio. Um, the patients that I find do best are the ones that are really motivated. So they'll get up, they'll move their shoulders, they'll, they'll move around. I've got to say, I've probably had a couple of patients, if I'm honest, that have come back and their shoulders have been a bit stiff and we've really had to work hard on their physiotherapy. Most of the time that their shoulders get back to about 90 to 95% function. If you talk to maybe one or two of my patients, they'll still say, yeah, you know, in certain positions at certain times, I get a bit of stiffness. Now, this is not a reconstruction that I would recommend for patients who use their upper limbs competitively. So I think about rock climbers, I think about cross country skiers they will probably have a level of weakness in that side compared to the other, because this is the kind of, this kind of pushing motion that cross country skiers will, will use. That is a latissimus dorsi action. So that will be much weaker after that deep recovery construction. So I would really counsel somebody who's a rock climber, for example, who is very competitive, not to have this type of reconstruction because they may find some functional loss. For the kind of average person who does day-to-day -day activities, who maybe golfs, who does goes to the gym, does Pilates, they will get back, if all goes well, to near normal function. I actually operated on a young lady who's in her 30s. She was a bodybuilder. So she was a competitive bodybuilder and now she'd kind of given that up and she was working in an office, but I, she decided to have a latissimus dorsi reconstruction. It was fully autologous. So we didn't use an implant and I thought she would fly through. I thought her other muscles would, would have kind of strengthened. And so she wouldn't miss her latissimus dorsi. She was one of the ones that struggled in the first few months, uh, but she was so motivated. She went to the gym, she got herself a personal fitness trainer and now I see her and she's bench pressing and, and pulling herself up on a bar and it's just phenomenal uh, and it really goes to show that you can get back to pretty much a, a, a good if not a great level of function um, after that kind of surgery 
Yeah, you know what I think happens? Well, first of all, to your point about uh, physiotherapy, or in the US, we call it physical therapy. It, yeah. It's so important. Oh my gosh, I saw so much value in it. So I'm yeah. glad you're uh, being a bit of a bully about that because I, yeah. I think, you know, there's women who just aren't told about it. So I'm glad you're one of those bully doctors that, yeah. that really believes in, in physical therapy. I find it was of such value to me. Um, yeah. And the other thing too, you know, to your point about your patient who was the bodybuilder and she, you know, was a little bit slower to come back. I think what happens with breast cancer patients, especially I think sometimes ones who are extremely active, who maybe have been in a competitive sport, they lose a little bit of the trust in their own bodies. Yeah. And so they have to regain that trust. But once they do, and through the encouragement of their surgeons, like you were talking about, you know, it's, it's almost like it's, it's even better afterwards yeah. because you've gone through the surgery and now it's like a, almost a double pat on the back for what yeah, you're doing. I think you're absolutely right. And so many times I've had patients come back and say, are you sure? Are you sure I can move my shoulder? And it's almost this kind of psychological reaction that my wound is going to split apart if I move too much. And this is not just with this kind of reconstruction. This is with a lot of different kinds of breast surgery. And we have to reassure patients that, look, you've got at least two layers of sutures on the inside. You've got steroid strips on the top. It's very, very difficult for this incision to split apart. And once they, once patients um, grow accustomed to that, I think that's half the battle. Once they kind of get over that mental hurdle and they do start moving, then I think they really are flying most of the time. Gosh. I'm looking at my questions here. You've answered all of them. That's great. Uh, yeah. So do you want, do you have any other thoughts that you want to wrap up with or? Um, I think it really comes down to patient choice. I think when I'm talking to my patients about reconstruction, either for partial breast reconstruction or total breast reconstruction, I tend to give them a book. I tend to draw them diagrams. I tend to say to them, there's no right reconstruction for every single patient. It all comes down to, what kind of reconstruction do you want? Which means what kind of breast reconstruction do you foresee in the future? How much would you like to go through now to get to that point? How do you feel about the idea of, for example, repeated surgeries in case you do need fat grafting? How do you feel about having a prosthetic, having an implant? And so these are very individual and very personalized answers. And so you'll find two patients with exactly the same tumor with perhaps even exactly the same build who choose completely different constructions. And to some extent, that's the interesting part of, of the job is, is helping patients navigate sometimes complex waters. Share decision-making all the way. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. And after mm -hmm. watching the video, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section and we will get to them. And if I can't answer them, I'm going to reach out to Dr. Pires for an answer and see what he can help us with. I really appreciate your time today. So good Thank to you. see you. Uh, mm -hmm. We're filming during the pandemic, but I love it that we can still do these videos and educate women. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Bye now. Goodbye.